So I was at my local equivalent of Walmart today, called Pick and Pay, and I happened to see a phone for sale for 119 Rand. Converted, that's just under $8. Now, cheap phones are nothing new. I'm sure we've all seen Unbox Therapy unbox and watch himself on more than enough phones. But that got me thinking. I had needed a battery for a project recently, and I remember paying quite a bit of money for that battery. And in fact, I actually paid more for that battery than I did for this phone. And then it hit me. This phone has a battery. Well, I have a phone. So I guess the goal of the video is to analyze what we can salvage from this cheap phone and see if it's worth buying it just for the certain parts. And of course later we'll take a look at the pricing versus international and environmental costs. Let's just start by seeing what's included in the package. Um, so pretty much what I would expect, just you know, a standard cell phone, maybe a couple cables, yeah. The battery comes in a different packet, there's a little charger, and an instruction manual. So, this is, this is really detailed in the instruction manual. Um, just some stuff about soft keys and how to turn them on, that kind of stuff. Really basic stuff. Um, we've got the phone itself, an actual charger. This is another piece we could actually use. I mean, a 5 volt adapter is pretty cheap, but I mean, if it's free with the battery, why not? Anyway, what we're after here is just the battery and the cell phone. So, taking a look at the battery, I can see it's a... What is it? It is a 600 milliamp battery. I'm just cutting in quick while editing this because I realized that the battery is actually 600 milliamp hours, but the advertising from before said it was 800 milliamp hours. So yeah, be aware of scams. Tree and it's a standard lithium 3.7 volt battery. So that's that's good news. Um, before we dive into the electronics of it, let's just you know plug it in and see what the phone looks like. I mean. I mean, what's interesting is this, this thing has some features my phone doesn't even have. It's got an SD card expansion, which I don't have on my phone. It's got two SIM cards, I don't have that either. It's um, quite weird to see a phone that literally costs about 20 times less have more features. Cool, so the phone is now on and it, oh, it makes the weirdest noise when you navigate. Here, listen to this quick. I can't imagine wanting to use that for more than five minutes. Um, let's see oh, some games, let's see what the games are. The camera though, that was something that was quite interesting. Let's see what that does. So yeah, the camera is pretty bad. I'll try and take some photos with it quickly and show you guys, but it's uh, not gonna be the kind of camera you wanna record stuff on. I also sincerely doubt that the video is that good on this thing, but I guess we'll see, right? And that's pretty much the just the phone. Let's just get into taking it apart now. I'm kind of hesitant about breaking it, but then again, I'm also not too hesitant about breaking it because it was, you know, under ten dollars. Oh wait, there's another screw. And then we can kind of, you know, assess where we can go from there. Wow, this is really nice LCD screen. I think I've actually seen one of these before on an Arduino project. So that's quite encouraging. Oh, there it goes. And of course, as we expect, every single component on here is a service mount component. So the chances of us salvaging like a voltage regulator or a battery charger are extremely low. Um, I was kind of hoping that we could kind of find an area on the board that covered um, charging. Like for example, this area to the far right over here, I'm pretty sure is the, um, the battery charging circuits. However, there are some other components on there I can see that aren't meant for battery charging. So everything's kind of thrown on there in different places. So the chances of us cutting that area off and using it for that purpose are pretty low, but uh, it, was, it was kind of a hope. But, you know, we, I think we'll still get our money back to some degree with the components of salvage now. Okay, so here's a board in a bit of a sorry state um, after being completely turned apart. But I wanted to point out these pretty interesting things here. We've got a lot of solder pads, which you don't normally see in um, cell phone motherboards. Um, these things all here. Now I see there's a few which are just for the battery and ground, I'm guessing that's for powering it in the factory when they want to give it a test or something, but there's also these um, TX and RX uh, pins, which if you know the Arduino, are used for serial communication. So we might be able to actually plug the cell phone into a computer through a serial device 
and actually read some data from it. I'm not sure how it would work, but that's definitely a future project to look into. It might be even possible to actually tap into the GSM features of the phone and use it like we would a normal module, which would be really cool. So here's everything I salvaged from the phone. First off are the things I don't think I'll get that much use out of, which are the screen and the camera. They both have a proprietary interface and searching the part number reveals nothing. However, I do think I'll be able to plug that screen into a driver board and get some use out of it later, but for the time being it's just going in the spare parts box. So what did I get that was actually useful? Prepare yourself to be underwhelmed. <laughs> Yeah, so it turns out salvaging integrated circuits is pretty hard. So let's take a look here. I've got some SMD resistors. Those are probably worth a good cent, maybe less. Then I've got a little speaker, also probably worth a cent. Also the camera flash LED, still working, that's definitely another cent. And then finally the 600 milliamp hour battery and the 5 volt charger, which locally cost about $6 and $3 respectively. Which means it's kind of worth it if I need the battery and 5 volt adapter in a rush, but not as great as I thought it would be, and when compared to the international prices, it's really not worth it at all if you can get free shipping. A good amount of natural resources went into producing the circuit board, casing, and components of this phone, and then here we are buying it and throwing 80% of it into the trash. Environmentally, it's pretty devastating, unless you find an old phone that was going to be thrown away anyway. That's fine. I suppose if those solder points on the phone turn out to be useful or if the screen works with an off-the-shelf driver board, it could be more worth it, but as of right now, I have to recommend against going out and buying a new piece of tech just to salvage parts. In the end, I 3D printed a connector, glued some pins in place, and connected my battery up to a charging circuit, and everything worked great. Now, something to note about these batteries is often they have more than two terminals. Mine had three, for example, and that's because two of them were for power and ground, and my third one was actually a temperature sensor. So the phone connects directly to this temperature sensor and makes sure the battery isn't getting too hot and can't explode. You may even see some batteries with four, and in most cases, the fourth one will send data back to the phone about the charge level or battery health. Let me know about some electronics you salvaged that was actually useful in the comments. If you liked the video, please do leave a like and subscribe, or if you want to support the channel, please consider becoming a Patreon on Patreon. Thanks so much for watching.